So um, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we are here um, with um, Mrs. Um, Paloma Durand, which is the director of the Sustainable Development Goals, which is a UN mechanism that brings together uh, UN agency, national uh, government, academia, civil society, and business uh, to achieve SDGs. Um, so Mrs. Paloma Durand will be uh, our first uh, uh, speaker. And we also have uh, Esada Camara, uh, which is from the uh, uh, Mayor's Office International Affairs. And uh, uh, Mrs. Esada Camara is in charge of the Strategic Relationships Manager and Program Director. And we are all there to speak about uh, uh, the program and the project that we, uh, that we developed. Uh, which is called the SDG Youth World Cup 2018. And this project is there to intend to be uh, an effective uh, example of the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And the aim of this project is to raise the awareness uh, of sports contributions to SDGs, as well as to highlight and spread good practices using the opportunity of the uh, 2018 FIFA World Cup that is taking place uh, uh, currently and right now uh, in Russia. So uh, this project is, uh, of course, to highlight the SDG. I'm not going to go through all the, uh, the SDG. I prefer, I rather prefer to, uh, to uh, let the the floor to, uh, to our two speakers. Uh, I just wanted to highlight a, a few things that this project is, is also uh, about partnership. Um, we wanted to have one project that brings together different stakeholders. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, is very important and that uh, uh, an important thing that we, we notice um, Monaco as co-chair of the uh, group of friends on sports. And, and, uh, and with this project, this is already a, a great achievement that we have. Because the, indeed, this project has been developed by, by the Permanent Mission of Monaco, of course, but in partnership with, with many other permanent missions, which are uh, Belgium, France, Germany, Morocco, Peru, the Republic of Korea, the Russian Federation, Senegal, um, and of course, with a, a great support and, 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 uh, and also um, in partnership with uh, the SDG Fund, UNICEF, UN Women, um, and uh, from uh, the, the civil society we, uh, and for the, the public area, we have, of course, the mayor's office and the two departments, the Department of Youth and Community Development and the Department of International Affairs. And for the private sector, we also have uh, the, um, a great partnership with the New York City FC. Um, and just to, be, uh, to give you another view of this project, we're going to have three key moments. Uh, the first moment, which, uh, which already um, 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 took place, which, which are the meetings with uh, the kids. We went uh, to the schools. Um, in New York City, and we meet with the, the kids to exchange about SDG. That was a great moment and a, a unique moment where we, we uh, have uh, an exchange of view on SDGs. And I thank the SDG uh, fund that uh, provide experts, and they were really great on that, and we really are thankful for that. The, the, um, the second moment is um, Actually, the tournament itself, we organized the tournament, which is a, a replicate of the, uh, 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 the World Cup. Um, we're going to have later today uh, a draw ceremony that you will be able to uh, follow online. We're going to um, um, post on Twitter on our um, account the result of the draw. And this is supported by, by the, the mission that I mentioned. We're going to have a permanent representative there and, and, and a beautiful ceremony where you're going to have the, the result. We're also going to have the schools there. Uh, to, uh, in, to, uh, to receive the endorsements of the, the eight countries' partners. And last and uh, not least is actually what we're going to take from there, uh, from, from this project. And this, this is um, a toolkit that we want to develop. And, uh, and this on this, I will uh, let the uh, uh, Madam Director to elaborate a bit more on that because they have this UN perspective and we want to, uh, to make this project as um, a pilot project where we're going to have, um, where we're going to uh, actually um, 
take good practices, spread good practices, and also elaborate uh, uh, some concrete tools that we can use to duplicate actually this, um, uh, this project. So um, without further uh, review, I um, uh, invite uh, Mrs. Durand, the director of the SDG Fund, to take the floor. Please. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning to everyone. I would love to be a participant in the uh, World Cup in Russia, but I mean, we are very happy here in New York also uh, to explain this initiative uh, that I think is a very good one, really, uh, in the sense that uh, we are trying to achieve the um, Agenda 2030 uh, putting together all the actors that traditionally the agenda really recognize as actors, and I think that this is a very good uh, experience to put together the UN agencies, member states, um, also um, the public sector, from, I mean, the office of the mayor of New York, also um, the contribution from civil society, um, for sure, led by uh, Monaco. So I think that this is a wonderful initiative um, that uh, I would like just to explain to you a little bit uh, how the initiative was discussed with uh, Monaco and taking into account also the work that other UN agencies are doing in this regard. So the first thing that I would like to explain is that I think that uh, in the Agenda 2030, for the first time, we have a specific reference to sport um, as a real uh, tool to improve the life of the people. I think that is very significant that the report of the Secretary General, when the agenda was approved, uh, devoted one specific paragraph, paragraph 37, which explicitly says transforming, uh, I mean, the, 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 the report is transforming our world, uh, the 2030 agenda, but it says explicitly sport is also an important enable of sustainable development and value the growing contribution of sport to the realization of development and peace in its promotion of tolerance and respect and the contributions it makes to the empowerment of women and young people, individual and communities, as well as to health, education, and social inclusion objectives. So I think that is really very significant that all member states in the UN approve this um, this uh, agenda, this new agenda with a specific reference to uh, sports. As you know, and also as was uh, explained by the representative of Monaco, uh, there were some uh, attempts and some works in the past in order to push for the link between sport and development, especially through the work of the Group of Friends of Sport and Development and Peace that was created in 2005, and that today has uh, almost uh, 50 member states, uh, uh, which is really something very significant because there are member states from the different regions of the UN, meaning that this is not a priority for one specific uh, geographical location, but this is really a universal goal. So I think that in, I mean, with this frame of the new agenda for development, uh, the SDG fund, that is a mechanism created for the implementation of the SDGs in the UN, it was created um, by UNDP on behalf of the UN system, meaning that we are working with all the UN agencies, currently with 16 agencies of the UN, and uh, we are trying to put together all the actors that the new agenda recognize as actors, trying to co-design and co-implement with them. Among the actors, we have, of course, member states, but also we have um, civil society, we have private sector, we have uh, creative industries, and of course, all the industries and the work related to sport. So that's the reason because in 2016, after the creation of the SDG fund, we started just to explore uh, different possibilities of partnerships uh, with different uh, member states and also with different um, football clubs mainly. Uh, in the beginning, it was just soccer. Um, but uh, we try really to keep in mind the different situation of sport in different countries. Um, 
So that's the reason, because we have a conversation with the um, Principality of Monaco, uh, which at that time um, already had the chair or the responsibility to co-chair the group of friends of sports uh, for development and peace. And that's the idea, because we decided just to, to develop um, a, a potential program with, uh, I mean, keeping in mind two things. First, that sports can play an important role, especially for peace in many countries, not only for development, but also for peace. And then we try to review all the values that really sport can teach to the, especially to children, uh, which are the, I mean, children and young people, but I mean, mainly children in many countries. And, you know, we try really to work together also keeping in mind the experience that we have in the SDG fund with projects in the past. So mainly um, the, ND, the SDG fund was just focused or keeping in mind uh, two joint programs that were implemented by the Millennium Development Goals Achievement Fund, which is the predecessor of our fund. And there were two specific programs especially really significant for the consequences with uh, young people and kids. The one, uh, the first one was in El Salvador. After 20 years of civil war there, uh, I mean, one of the main problems was really how to achieve peace uh, and mainly how to really forget or put aside all the memories that the population uh, has from both sides. Huh? So um, in the MDG fund, they tried to promote a campaign which was called I Choose to Live in Peace, trying to engage um, mainly, I mean, children, but also adolescents and young people, which are really the future leaders of the country. I think that the impact was really very positive, that would, the, there was a kind of um, um, inter-municipal Olympic festival with uh, different cities and villages, and the experience was really very positive because the impact of the project in this specific population. And it happened in, in I mean, with a different angle in the case of Palestine, where we also, uh, under the umbrella of the program on gender empowerment, uh, it was created and a specific team um, for girls and women to play soccer. Um, I mean, I think that um, I mean after the initiative, um, after uh, all the work trying really to build a team, to create a team, to select the people, um, they really won the match in the in in the area and i think that uh, it was also uh, like the first step for the creation of the palestinian football federation uh, council uh, meaning that uh, i mean women receive like an open door to use also sports to get a little bit more empowerment and leadership in the community. So I think that really the, the, the work of a sport in every place is different, taking into account, of course, the specific circumstances of the geographical area. But I think that at the end, the impact in the population really is very positive. That's the reason because we wanted just to organize with uh, Monaco, also with the Office of International Affairs in the, in the major city, and also um, with UN Women and UNICEF. Uh, we would like to organize this soccer tournament. Uh, but, you know, as, as also um, Cedric explained, uh, for us, the important thing is also to prepare this toolkit that uh, he mentioned that probably will be launched during the high-level political forum, where I think that the most important contribution will be focusing the idea that sports are passing from a residual role in the agenda to have a, a really a central work in the agenda. So I think that from the point of view of the political approach is very important because it's showing that member states are ready to work on that, but also at the same time, we would like not only to show that, but also to 
try to get the lessons learned that we have from the implementation, from the side of implementation, and also from other agencies that are also working on uh, sports and development. So I think that at the end, the toolkit uh, has like this uh, double goal, if I can say so, which is to show the mapping about the work of the UN related to uh, sports, but then at the same time to, uh, to show the positive impact for the implementation of a specific programs in this area. So, um, I mean, even if uh, I'm sorry if I take so long, but uh, at least just to explain the whole picture and the reasons because we are here. So uh, special thanks really to the Principality of, of Monaco, whose perspectives really provide us the basis for the toolkit and and also finance part of this, of this project. Also, thank you to um, the rest of the agencies that are working with us with the SDG fund. Also, thank you to the um, Office of International Affairs in the in the mayor's office in here in New York, and also thank you to the New York um, City um, uh, FC that really is also contributing to this. So, thank you so much to everyone. So thank you, Madam Director, and really thank you for recalling this important message like sport is an important enabler for sustainable development is really a key message and uh, a message that uh, in the, the, um, the group of friends uh, on sports, we really try to uh, speak out loud and, uh, and thank you for that. And also thank you uh, for the, the toolkit indeed is very important. It's a, a key pillar of this project because it makes it sustainable and, uh, and it makes it not just a one-shot uh, one shot event, but really something that can be duplicated. So uh, I really, uh, uh, we really value the con this contribution because it's very important. So thank you very much, uh, Madam Director. And uh, now I give the floor to uh, Mrs. Kamara Isada, please. Wonderful. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Aisata Kamara, and I am the Strategic Relationships Manager and Program Director for the New York City Junior Ambassadors Program uh, in the New York City Mayor's Office for International Affairs. Uh, the Mayor's Office for International Affairs serves as the primary liaison between the city of New York and the largest diplomatic community in the world which includes the United Nations, the 193 missions, 115 consulates, and uh, 70 economic trade missions. On behalf of Mayor Bill de Blasio and Commissioner Abewardina, as well as the city, I really want to thank the Principality of Monaco for their leadership and all the partners who are providing New York City youth with the opportunity to continue learning about SDGs through sports. The mayor has described New York's, the United Nations as a blessing to New York City, and our commissioner's vision energizes all of us to continue finding ways to connect the United Nations to the city. Our administration is committed to youth empowerment and to ensuring that young people's voices are heard. Our office has strategically thought about ways to make connections between New York City youth and the world while also strengthening the relationship between the United Nations and our city. At the end of the day, we want to make sure that all New Yorkers know and see the value of the United Nations and the value that it brings to New York City specifically. We believe that one of the best ways to reach all New Yorkers is by activating young people. The SDGs is also one of the windows that we think young people could make these connections. In 2015, we launched the U New York City Junior Ambassadors Program to connect seventh graders to the UN and to empower young people in activating around some of the most pressing issues around the world. Since then, we have engaged over 1,000 students and teachers across the five boroughs. But we have also, this past Monday, celebrated the induction of over 500 additional youth and educators into our alumni network. Educators from across the city compete to participate in our program by identifying ways that they can incorporate the United Nations and topics such as the refugee crisis, climate change, access to education, and gender equity into their curriculum. 
New York City Junior Ambassadors is an experience both for youth but also for their educators. And so with that, we create opportunities for professional development where educators are given the tools to engage their students and we encourage them to allow young people to lead lessons and activities in their classroom and in their community. Our office, along with uh, implementing the New York City Junior Ambassadors Program, also created the Global Vision Urban Action Program. And this program is to connect our city's equity agenda, one NYC, to the global goals through shared best practices and curated events. In this capacity, our office uses the SDGs framework to translate New York City's local sustainability progress to a global audience, while building upon our efforts since 2015 to connect our local actions to the global goals. We are also the first city in the world to submit a voluntary local review that will be a presentation of existing New York City data and programs in a format that is accessible to the UN community as well as other stakeholders following the SDGs process. Along with these flagship programs, we, are also, we also collaborate with various UN agencies, missions and consulates to make the connections between the city and the diplomatic community and the United Nations. Specifically, in 2016, we worked with the Youth and Voice Office to bring over 200 young people to the United Nations in celebration of Youth Day in collaboration with our New York City Department of Youth and Community Development. DYCD is also a partner of the New York City Junior Ambassadors Program and of this uh, SDGs Youth World Cup. But while we had 200 young people inside the UN, we also understood the importance of connecting even more young people in the city to the United Nations. And so we continued our work and we have stayed true to our mission by ensuring that New York City voices and the voices of young people are represented in convenings, including high-level meetings. And we, were, we are extremely grateful to UNICEF for working with us on many of these events. And so, we, and so when we were told about this opportunity to engage young people around sports and the SDGs, we knew that it was an opportunity that we needed to engage with. And with that, we have been able to identify eight co-ed co teams of New York City youth who will be competing in the first SDGs Youth World Cup. These young people, by participating, have learned about the UN and the SDGs. They have developed dance, dances that they will do each time that they score a goal. But as they experience these moments, so will their families, their friends, their network, and so we have many more New Yorkers learning about the United Nations and learning about the Sustainable Development Goals. And this is exactly the type of intergenerational conversations we want to harness in, the, in New York City. And so in conclusion, I want to once again thank you all and all the partners for, their, for the opportunity and for enabling New York City youth to be able to participate in such a great event. And our office will continue to work on ensuring that young people are represented in the work of the UN. We will also continue to foster our youth's voices and their ability to advocate for themselves through activism. So thank you once again on behalf of Mayor de Blasio and Commissioner Abe Ordina. Thank you, Cedric. Thank you very much, uh, Kamara. We really appreciate it. Uh, your work and, and indeed uh, your office is a strong advocate uh, of SDGs and at large at the UN uh, uh, values. So it's very important and, and I know um, that you have been working on this. I mean, we, are, we started to work with you, but you're working on this topic for years and uh, you, we know your, your knowledge on that. And uh, you did, a, uh, you or you do, and you did uh, already a great job for, on that. So we really appreciate. And uh, and and when we were uh, starting to 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 talk about this project and develop, then it comes up to to our mind very naturally to to work with with you because we knew about your your background and about uh, how you. Uh, how much you did already on, on this topic. So thank you very much, and thank you for your, for your kind words. And um, is there any question for the floor? Yes, please, ma'am. 
Thank you. Could uh, you tell us a little bit more about the tournament, such as where and when it's taking place and the ages of the young people involved? Yes, of course. So the tournament will take place tomorrow. Um, it's supposed to, to take place at uh, Rendell's Island, and that will start uh, at 10 o'clock. Um, it involved, uh, so as uh, Kamara said, uh, eight teams from uh, age 10 to uh, 14. And uh, so we actually designed it as a true World Cup, I would say. <laughs> we're going to have like group uh, stages and then we have, we're going to have half final and a final. And this is going to be um, decided uh, um, to, um, in a draw ceremony that will take place later on today uh, at 1 o'clock. And you actually going to find a lot of information on this, uh, on this project on, online. Um, we actually have on, on um, uh, our, our official uh, website from the, the, Monic the, the, the mission of Monaco, we have um, uh, a pages dedicated to this project, and we also post uh, uh, information uh, on Twitter on our official um, um, account, which is uh, at Monaco underscore ONU, O-N-U. Um, where you already have information of what has been done already and what will be uh, done. And uh, we're going to post uh, all the information in real time for the draw ceremony, for the tournament itself, uh, till, till the final and, and uh, till, uh, till the end of the project, actually. And I just wanted to, to highlight, um, you were mentioning that the toolkit will be launched during the, the high-level uh, political forum. And indeed, I already have a date and an, a time, so <laughs> I says this opportunity to let you know that uh, uh, actually the toolkit will be launched on the 9th of July, July 9th. Uh, we're going to have a side event, which, is, which will be um, within the frame of the HLPF, so you're going to have it uh, on the uh, official agenda of the HLPF, and it's going to be during lunchtime from 1.15 to 3 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, so... Any, yes, please. Yes, sorry. Yes, sorry, sorry, excuse me. Um, just in terms of the background of the youth that are participating also, if I may add, uh, yes, sure. the city of New York through the Department of uh, Youth and Com through the DYCD, the Department of Youth and Community Development, provides after-school programming for young people who are often of low-income backgrounds. And so these young people were already participating in soccer teams and are really passionate about soccer. So they are extremely grateful and really thrilled to be able to participate and to showcase their skills at such a global competition. So we're very thrilled about it. And indeed, uh, each team will represent a country, and uh, we uh, they're going to be endorsed by the ambassador. The, the permanent representative will hand over the jersey uh, later on today to the coaches. So uh, they're going to they're going to wear the uh, the national team jersey during the World Cup, and uh, so we got the support of the the, um, the the permanent mission I mentioned, and they are all teams that are participating to the World Cup currently. So. Uh, yeah, so sorry. You no, no, not at all. Don't be sorry. I, I wanted to, I'm sorry, I, have to, I haven't seen the list. I, I, I hope there are none, none of the teams that have already been uh, eliminated from uh, after. <laughs> but that, I'll, uh, I'll just let that one hang there. But I wanted to actually. Uh, Argentina? Uh, not eliminated yet, but a few, a few. Saudi Arabia. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> yeah. the, the, I wanted to know if you have a, bur if you have like a, bur just a New York City question in terms of like the teams. You said they, they participate through this Department of Youth, but are they are they are they borough specific? Do they where where do they normally play? Just to understand a bit more. And I wanted to have one question about the SDGs fund. I did. I spent a lot of time here asking about this um, reconfiguration of the development system, the way they're going to move the develop the resident coordinators to under the Deputy Secretary General. And I just wanted to know. I, I was looking at your web page where you say that the SDG fund, you know, it's part of UNDP, I guess, and it works through the resident coordinators. What will be the change to this to, to your your actual fund? If uh, the, the Secretary General's reform gets fully funded, how would it change what you do? Thanks a lot. So maybe, Kamala, you, you would yeah. start? Um, 
Thank you for that question. Um, so the kids that are involved are coming from across the different boroughs. Um, we have kids from the Bronx, from Brooklyn, from Manhattan that are all participating, and they actually have their sites where they play soccer on a weekly basis or, or for some of them on a daily basis. And so they are those sites that we worked with to be able to actually get these kids to participate in the program. And I just want to add that with uh, to add something about the countries for us as a city we are a city of immigrant and we are proud of that and so for our kids to be able to represent these countries and to play in a soccer game it's really important for us and for them as well so thank you okay thank you for the question uh just to i mean i don't want just to put the attention in a different okay. theme today but very quick um the fund is uh, located in UNDP, but doesn't belong to UNDP uh, because we, we didn't report to UNDP. We report to a steering committee composed by member states and also UN agencies. So, uh, but it's in UNDP because, as you know, UNDP um, is the, at least up to now, um, the, the chair of the UN Development Group meaning that uh, under the responsibility or the umbrella of UNDP, you have the uh, multi-partner trust fund, uh, which is the administrative agent um, for us and for all the entities where two or more agencies of the UN are working together. Um, so it means that um, even if we are located in UNDP, we really don't belong to UNDP. But in any case, um, regarding your question about this reconfiguration and organization, of course, we are in the process to reorganize where the fund will be located and how will be the, the final setting and the final picture of the whole reform. So I suppose that in some months we will give you the, the final picture about that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any question on the tournament or, or other questions? Okay, if not, I really invite you to uh, follow us uh, on our Twitter account and under the uh, hashtag SDGs Youth World Cup. We're going to post all the information and we're going to have a lot of things uh, included. We're going to try to uh, launch at the end of the, of the tournament a small challenge to the actually real team that are still competi uh, competing. And still, as we are still in the group phase, no one is eliminated yet. <laughs> uh, I mean, they're still in the committee. They still have a game, actually. So, uh, so uh, <laughs> let's see. And, and we wish uh, all the best to all the teams, of course. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for this.